Hello. Hello. Bonjour, Bruxelles. Could I say, first of all, thank you to everyone who's come here today to support Julian Assange and call for his freedom. Because it is our voice, it is our voice in this city and in cities all around the world that's so important to be raised now in defense of Julian Assange, who is suffering in a maximum security prison in Britain and fighting the legal case against his extradition to the United States. This campaign will be won by our resolution, by our activity, and above all, by our strengthening of support for his campaign all over the world. This rally today is being live streamed in many places around the world, and many will be seeing videos of it. And so, those of us in this square here are united in our determination to see Julian walk free. We also say to people all around the world, think for a moment, think for a moment of why Julian Assange is in prison. Julian is a journalist. Julian did what journalists should do. He searched for the truth. He searched for the truth about war, about environmental destruction and degradation. He searched for the truth about the um, state-sponsored spying that goes on against political activists in many countries around the world. And he challenged the power that conceals those truths and revealed it all to the world. His crime is not, in my view, a crime, but his crime is that he let the world know the bad intentions of many who've taken us into war in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Yemen, have bombed, bombed the people of Yemen with weapons supplied from Britain. Those oil companies that are in the rush to the Arctic and destroy that pristine environment, the more to make profits out of it as they drag fossil fuels out of the ground. And so many other issues and cases around the world. Julian has told the truth. And so if we allow Julian to be silenced for the rest of his life. It's devastating for him, for Stella, for their children, for his friends, for his family. But it is also a form of censorship on every journalist around the world. It's a form of self-censorship because those that um, are able to speak out about human rights abuses in various places around the world. Speak the truth about the corruption of governments, of police, of military. They'll say, well, Julian Assange paid the ultimate price and was silenced and imprisoned. And this is looking down the line some years. He could then be in prison on a triple life sentence in the United States in a maximum security prison. The message will be that if you speak out, you put yourself at risk and nobody's going to support you. We're here today to say the very opposite. You speak out, you tell the truth, and we are here to support you in this square, in other cities, and all around the world. And Julian is now being held in Her Majesty's prison, Belmarsh, in southeast London. It is, as it says, a maximum security prison. The conditions in it are awful. They're designed 
to destroy and intimidate the prisoner that is in there. And Julian has now been there for a long time. And all the demands that he be placed in some sensible place, even if not released, have been fallen on deaf ears. The punishment goes on. The punishment to try to destroy the man. But it's not working because he's not going to be destroyed, he isn't destroyed, and we're not going to allow him to be destroyed. But if you think through, ever since WikiLeaks came out, ever since all those documents came out to such embarrassment to the US government, the CIA, and every other Western government around the world, there's been this character assassination of Julian. A character assassination of the man, they've tried to destroy his character, they've tried to destroy his spirit, and all the time that he was in the embassy, the uh, Ecuadorian embassy in London, we now understand that he was being spied on, his personal possessions were being ransacked, and many were taken away and stolen at the end of it, legally privileged and entitled documents. And so, you think about that, and then you think, if Julian had been a journalist in a different place, in a different country, which is one that is not acceptable to the West, just suppose he had been a journalist in Russia and said things about Russian nuclear secrets, or if he'd been a journalist in China and talked about things in China and had come out, he would be lauded by every newspaper all over the world as being the speaker of truth. Well, truth is a very simple word and it applies in all circumstances. And so I say to all those um, liberal papers around the world that have been so strangely silent in reporting the plight of Julian Assange, think for a moment of where you, from whence you came and what you are doing. Because if you do nothing to support Julian Assange, you are complicit in his imprisonment, his uh, sending to the United States, and he's being placed on trial there. And so I want to give a very blunt message to many of the liberal press around the world. Why is it that when the court cases have taken place in London, and there have been a lot of them, and they've gone on for a long time, the number of British and Western European journalists there is actually quite small. There haven't been editorials in the papers all over the world saying that Julian Assange speaks for all of us when he tells the truth. There's been this um, self-denying ordinance of saying nothing. Trappism has taken over, and all they've done is broadly reported the facts. Either he's won his case, or he's lost his case, or he's appealing, or he's not appealing. I want people to speak up, tell us what they think. Do they think it's right? Do they think it's right that Julian Assange should be in prison? Do they think it's right that he's been in solitary confinement? Do they think it's right that he's going through this torture? Do they think it's right that he should be put in an American prison for 175 years? I'm sure they would all say, no, 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 of course it's not right. Well, if it's not right, why aren't you saying so? Why aren't those papers speaking out? Why aren't those journalists speaking out? Because that, to me, is what the important thing is. And so, this message from today here in Brussels, and I do pay tribute to those that have organised this event today and organised events all over the world, is very important. Because the message has got to go out. To people in Australia, where Julian was born and grew up, and has many friends and support, You've got an election coming up in Australia. 
The issue is not some judice in Australian courts. It can be raised in the Australian Parliament. Ask every candidate in the Australian election, do you think Julian Assange should be sent to the USA or should he be freed as a heroic free-speaking journalist? Simple question, yes or no? I want them all to say yes and then an Australian government to speak up in support of Julian. In exactly the same way, I say this to our friends in the United States. The United States has a fascinating modern history. The history of slavery, the history of occupation of the West and all the, all the great histories of the United States. But it also has another history. The history of those that stood for an organized working class in the 18th and particularly 19th and 20th century that stood up against the most brutal police repression that Paul Robeson sang about. Those that took part in the freedom marches to bring about the Civil Rights Act to try and end the legacy of slavery, the racism in the southern states, those brave people that risked all to support Martin Luther King and others to bring that about. And those thousands of very brave Americans that risked all to oppose the Vietnam War, the brutality that went with it, and the use of chemical weapons against the Vietnamese people. That is the tradition of the United States that I'm appealing to. That tradition. So I say to our friends across the water in the United States, say to President Biden, it's in your hands. You are the one who appealed against the decision that Julian should not be sent to the United States on medical grounds. It's your administration that's put that there. Over 70 million people voted for President Biden, the largest ever vote in American history. That would include millions of people who want to see a world of peace and justice, who want to see a challenge to the rich and powerful that are disfiguring and destroying our planet and creating such terror and inequality amongst the poorest people all over the world. And so I say to the Democrats in the United States as they go into the midterm elections, and I say to President Biden, think of your own history, think of your demands for liberty, Think of your demands for free speech and think of those great American journalists, H.O. Mencken and many others that spoke up for free speech and spoke up against uh, oppression and silencing and do the right thing and stop the demand that Julian Assange be taken and put on trial in the USA where he will potentially face a prison sentence of 175 years. So, it's now up to us. We're not all going to become legal experts. We're not all going to understand every last dot and comma of every extradition treaty or the process which is being heroically fought out by Julian's lawyers in the courts in London. But what we do understand is the simple issue. An innocent man told the truth, it upset the rich, it upset the powerful, it embarrassed the guardians of the rich and the powerful, and so he has got to pay the price. Do not let him be character assassinated and destroyed. I've witnessed that happen to many other people. I've got some first-hand experience of it as well. And say to our friends, to our neighbors, and people all around the world, now, now is the time to speak up that this innocent man be freed and released the more he can make the world a safer place by understanding the realities of the dangers we face of surveillance, of war, of environmental destruction, of an out of control arms industry that wants to create more wars around the world and instead those of us that want to end war by agreement and bring about a world of peace. The information Julian gave all of us helps us in that quest. Today, be strong, be resolute and be powerful. 
and next release, Julian Assange. Thank you.